Who are the next gen top 10 active skaters inspiring the future of rollerblading? All the stunts are performed by professionals. Do not attempt this yourself. When chatting about the all-time greats, you'll usually hear names like Haffy, Aragon, Farmer, Fabiola, Latimer, Takeshi, Brosco, Shima, and so on. There's probably a pool of 20 to 30 names that are interchangeable for people's top 10 lists, but a lot of these skaters aren't active anymore, and all of them are defo over 30. Of course, the youth can be inspired by those lot, and absolutely, it's worth checking out history's iconic skaters. But who are the current skaters directly above the youth who are closer in age that they will be looking to for motivation in today's video we're going to go over the top 10 skaters under 30 starting with rollerblading's answer to johan cruyff it's leffy van rain a lot of people probably first heard the leffy after his seven minute stormer of a section at the end of plastic pushes too the one where he does the jump roll soul free spooks a woman on the escalator and coffin slides under the barrier which well, he'd done first go by the way was that for a shot uh it was for a shot but i was happy with it so i think i did it 10 times damn and the bank has since been capped because of that trick so uh good luck trying anything else there what a lot of people might not know is he's actually been on the radar for shops and brands for over 12 years now this is soul picked him up around 2012 he then released his first edit on the raises in 2013 and you could already see how quickly he was developing he had a natural talent wasn't afraid of getting stuck right into big tricks and was buzzing with potential to take it even further 2013 was a pretty standout year for him. He took third in the first ever junior comp at Winter Clash and had that little rail session with a young Don Bruce and was a flash of things to come. He impressed at Summer Clash with big tricks and showed his ability to hang with the older boys at the Real Street Amsterdam competition against the likes of Eugen Enin. He left Razors. Surprise, surprise. He joined local brand Adapt where he got his first pro model skate in 2018. He technically got two actually because there was an updated version with a power strap and black stitching rather than white. By this point his abilities had skyrocketed. He could do all the traditional impressive moves but he'd really honed in on the creativity and playful nature of his skating. He had inspired ideas, he could skate anything and that seemed to be a really big motivator for him. He carved a lane for himself at such a young age and it was really impressive he left the dap under fractious circumstances he told me like uh, i'm gonna ruin your career and i'm gonna break your legs if you like start skating for another brand what and he said i'm gonna beat you up and stuff like that that is crazy <laughs> He joined Roches alongside his pal and Burza Torden crewmate Martin Danning where he set about making more of a name for himself with what felt like a really refreshing approach to skating captured in Leffy's trip to Italy where again you've seen this entertaining mix of traditional with unique touches of creativity. He had clips in David Sizemore's fifth floor and his plastic pushers two part felt like he'd really found his form and was the best display of his abilities yet. When Billy O'Neill and John Bellino were putting together Mesmer, they reached out to Dom. He was like, Levy, we need Levy. And uh, everyone was like, yeah, Levy, Levy, Levy. And it goes back to the communist thing. Like, I've only seen two uh, clips of him, but I was like, eh, if everyone's saying it, then it must be, okay, let's go. Levy was on the team for about two or three months, and then Billy finally saw his Plastic Pushers 2 section. I was like, this, this guy's this good? It shocked me. I was like, oh my God, this is so stoked. And he's just continued to impress. He has a huge presence in all of the output on Mesmator videos and had a scorcher of a solo edit in Amsterdam the first days. He skates like a Jack Russell with a driving license, a frantic level of raw energy that encapsulates the original spirit of street skating but he has the technical prowess to direct that energy into finesse tricks. There's a freedom and childlike curiosity that will make him skate everything and anything. Like I wonder what would happen if I jumped on that or is this grindable? And he does it so well. This also then feeds into his creativity, making him such an inspiring and exciting skater to watch. He skates on his own terms. I'm sure soon Mesmer will give him his next pro skate and he'll grow into an influential force in skating. Not only is Leffy a prime example of a talented skater kids can aspire to be, but there's also a bit of a cautionary tale there about who you put your faith in within the industry. 
sticking in Europe and Austria, known for Mozart, Venus Schnitzel, and skaters that can't get their hats over their fringe, aka Mikhail Witzerman. I first remember noticing him in a Rems Week edit from like 2016, and thinking then he had a, like, a sense for what tricks look good. He was put on the AM team in 2017 and continued that form. There was a lot of focus on style and he never seemed to overextend himself, instead raising his level of execution, which served him well. Perfect. From there, he was putting out quality content consistently and all over the place. He had stuff with his crew, TWG, and had solo sections under his channel. He got bits with the Seattle boys in Chance of Rain 3, which was a really big co-sign. He got a wheel sponsor and released Sol in the June of 2020, following that up with Beats and Blades three months later. He was really starting to make a name for himself and was defining his style. So his rem started to fizzle out like a silent fart and his skates were starting to look like leather face mask. He left the brand at the end of 2020. But it wasn't long before Eugen Ennen was on the blower, scooping him up for USD. Come with me to USD and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Looking like a ragabond squash instructor, his USD intro edit did some healthy numbers and was a great snapshot of his skating. Very clean, considered tricks, he was technical, we had tricks both ways, and was always stylish. From there, things seemed to just accelerate. The more footage he put out, the more you could see him diving into skating that was authentic to him and refining it. I say there were strong influences from people like Sean Kelso, Ryan Parker, and Josiah Blee, but he still brought his own character to it. He won the Spring Blading Cup in 2022. Michael Weitzman. <laughs> Interestingly, coming second in the AMS at the same comp, putting the wind down to his overall approach. Tried the things I felt comfortable with, tried to make the most out of that. Your very best skating is your own skating. People will enjoy this more, you will enjoy it more, which is actually the, uh, the turning point here. I want to be myself skating, be authentic, have fun and go for whatever feels right at the moment. This fast tracked him to go in pro for USD and get in a pro skate shortly after. The edits to accompany these milestones are pretty good reflections of modern skating. Heavy on the style, lots of confidence in the execution, toying with ideas to step beyond the traditional and clearly take an influence from wizard skating where things become more about flowing movements and harnessing the potential of the skates while they're on the ground. He's quite literally using more of the skate's functionality than others, and it's an exciting prospect. Although the technicalities of some of his tricks may go over those not initiated, I still think it's fair to say outsiders and young skaters will find his skating really fun, appealing, and relatable. I think his openness to other styles like wizard skating is gonna push the skating that got him recognized and got him a pro skate even further, and that's a good message for young kids as well. If you're into the vids and like to see me continue, this channel basically runs off your support. So a like, a comment, like subscribing, that's all really useful. I really appreciate that. There's also the Patreon, channel membership, exclusive videos, sneak peeks, there's merch you can buy so you get something in exchange, something physical and uh, it all really does genuinely help me out. So uh, cheers. Next door to him is his pal, Marius Gale, who is a fascinating skater and a bit of a mysterious character. Oh, yeah, dude. Since I first seen his skating, probably in the Valo edit and then in the amazing Aldemus, I feel like he's had a mature sense of awareness about his own skating. It seemed he had a solid understanding of how he wanted to skate and a crystal clear vision of how he wanted it portrayed, which has remained present today. Pretty wild for someone so young. And especially when I feel like most young skaters are throwing themselves at tricks, trying to find the quickest way to 540 grinds and like crowd pleasers. In my opinion, he's always been more interested in presenting a refined idea. He's not afraid to keep a trick simple, knowing this exposes how well you execute it because he's confident he's got the style to do it well. He can take a straight air and make it look fucking brilliant. The difficulty comes from making that trick look perfect and elevating it above its simple nature. He is a dab hand at skating awkward spots and a lot of the time I think these tricks would go undervalued as well because they're deceivingly hard and unless you've tried to do something similar yourself, the difficulty is not always easily translated. I really value that he pursues that challenge knowing that he'd probably have an easier time getting appreciation for hucking a hurricane topsole. He's creative in that sense as well. Seeing the tricks in the spots people might overlook and adding little intricacies that give it a bit more character. 
A lot of his trick selections and style feel like a big nod to 90s skating, a time where the trick range was smaller, so putting your own personality into it became a hyper focus and style was exaggerated as that was the only way to stand out rather than who can spin the most to a trick no matter how god awful it looked. But he also doesn't get consumed with that and look like he's just cosplaying the 90s. He skates in a way that feels modern and relevant. A testament to his vision was Jewel, a shared edit with Alex Brosco. A couple of things about that. It's got to be pretty intimidating skating with arguably the GOAT, and especially at a young age. But he doesn't look out of place at all. He's stuck with what he does best, and I think his tricks hold weight and really complement that edit. Another testament to his skating was receiving a pro skate from them. Nice one, brother! Now every project he's involved with, whether that's solo pieces like Big Ma or Pulses, his parts in them edits, all of his appearances across the various FTS videos, and more recently edits for Dead Wheels with Don Bruce, and his bits in Tape 3. I'm always eager to see his skating. It feels like a refreshing take on authentic classic street skating and I think that says a lot about his integrity, that he's stuck to his vision of skating. He took a route that was probably harder for him to make an impression, but he's done it and I think that's an important message for the generation below that you can find your own path, stick with it and make it great. Norway has wilderness, great salmon, polar bears and Martin Danning who has been a ripper since he was really young and has the most bassiest voice in rollerblading. Um, but His voice makes me feel like mine sounds like a trainer on a squash court. <laughs> this is Solar on the Pulse and had him on the team when he was just 13 but despite his young age you could tell he was one to watch. Shortly after that he caught the eye of John Julio who started shipping in Valo skates which is a massive cosign. He got another cosign from BMAG when they did an article on him at 16. Just all the indicators, this kid was doing something right because it gets absolutely Baltic in Norway in the winter. Martin became really proficient at skating park. He won the juniors at Wintercash in 2017 and did two on the bounce, winning the amateurs the following year. As Valo was ending and then was starting up, John got in contact with him and was like, I hope you be on board with like, what we're going to do next. Then I was like, yeah, of course, going to do that. Things went a little bit quiet though, and then come Roche's waving the golden ticket. And at the time, I felt like I would play a bigger role in Roche's than what I would in them. Which at the time, I would agree, was the smart move. Roche's were basically going to build the team around Martin, but uh, things didn't quite pan out like that. I do wish that I could go back and change my decision. However, while on Roche's, he was very active and you started to see his style really forming. He liked to skate fast, there was a rawness and excitement to it, but also little intricacy. And I think you could spot the influence of skaters he looked up to, like David Sizemore, Adam Brearley, Mike Lilly and Gabriel Hayden. A good mix of getting roundy and just sending some tricks but also the ability to get technical and a conscious effort to add in style. He'd also got a crew together, Burrs of Torden with Leffy and Seba, and they started carving a bit of a lane for themselves. That first self-titled release, Burrs of Torden, is a banger man. But things at Roche's took a weird, unprofessional and completely inappropriate turn. She was like manipulating me to believe things that wasn't real, like she was threatening and kicking me out because I didn't answer messages from her at like 1 a.m. on a Friday night about nothing to do with skating. She was like threatening with kicking me out of the team and I was like, please. Martin started skating them and was putting out some exciting footage and Julio was more than happy to send in the skates. Clearly a great sign of recognition. He got put on Orange Wheel Company and got a pro wheel and again released more great footage to go with that. And then another massive co-sign from Billy O'Neill and John Bellino when they put him on Mesmer. This and his path up until this point is a solid indication there's something about his skating that's worth attention. His edits under Mesmer have seen him come more into his own and just build on what made him a great prospect to begin with with. He's got a superb eye for spots, absolutely pegs it when he's skating, has quality aerial prowess like a white-tailed eagle, has got switch-ups, amazing trick selection, can throw something out there that's a little bit different, has a cool style and makes it all look pretty ace. Plus he still makes himself handy at competitions. 
He won the Am Blading Cup and Mini Ramp in 2022. He's just secured the Blazer at B-Roll. He throws out some mad tricks at Winter Clash every time he's there. And he's currently only 24. 24 when he skated for This Is Soul, Valo, Roches, Them, Orange Wheel Company, and now Mesma. I think he's a captivating skater, and his motivation is a great example to kids. Like Putting out his own stuff under Burza Torden and not just relying on brands is sick and such a good message. Plus, he has plenty of time to get even better. Over in Scotland, where the cows have hairstyles like emotional teenagers, and it's the enigmatic Dominic Bruce. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now Dom is only 25, but it seems like he's been around for ages based off the rucker videos he's been in. Interestingly, Dom actually started out as a skateboarder. Friend that off, Dom's dad stepped in and changed the course of rollerblading history. My dad said, why don't you try the rollerblading skate camp? <laughs> Mate, what a shout. It seems like Dom has a natural talent for rollerblading, and that's not to say that he hasn't worked hard for it, but he just seems built for it. Ow! If you look at footage of him when he's like 14 or 15 years old, he's already flowing around skate parks with intuitive lines, technical grinds, big gaps, and doing stuff that still feels relevant now, but also stuff that I'd expect from someone who had multiple decades of experience. He made a splash on the international scene when he won the first ever junior comp at Winter Clash in 2013. And there's this grind box edit from the following year of him and Joe Atkinson, which shows how wild and forward thinking Dom already was. Plus it's a reminder of the levels Atkinson has as well. Anyway, from there, it seemed like everybody wanted a slice of Dominic Bruce. He's done videos with City Life. He connected with John Lee on a piece. He did Pappas with Greg Preston and Too Easy. plus loads of the Haitian projects such as Reincarnation, Inti, which was mostly shot on Super 8 in Peru, and Achaidi, probably said that wrong, where you see Dom tackling all manner of interesting obstacles and architecture in Tenerife. During that time, he went from SSM to Razors, won the arm at Winter Clash, and was putting out even more footage, eventually turning pro for Razors, but then shortly leaving them. He'd also moved to Copenhagen, which is a city that brings out the best in Dom skating. No more evident than when he teamed up with David Sizemore and dropped the roller coaster ride. Three part section that sees Dom skating like he's got a permanent power start from Mario. It is fucking frantic in the best possible way. Every clip feels very in the moment and spontaneous. There is a free Dom, oi oi, to his skating that turns the city into a massive playground and it's all credit to his outstanding abilities. You can't skate these unconventional spots and throw out these tricks without having incredible foundations. David includes these insightful interludes in the videos where you get to see Dom's mind at work. Many people have said there's a jazz to Dom skating and these are great examples of it. The way he can approach an obstacle multiple times but just go with the flow and come out with a different result each time. Outside of this, Dom will also mix in more traditional tricks, big stunt and blend unorthodox tricks with quite frankly, silly levels of risk. He became a part of the newly formed Mesmer in 2021 and a year later got his first ever pro skate. His edit to complement this is another shining example of his top shelf abilities and unique approach to skating. No one skates like Dominic Bruce. The unpredictability makes him thrilling to watch. His atypical skating is inspiring and widens what we consider skatable objects. He's more than capable of big tricks and is willing to take a risk, but he's also not afraid to try something experimental at the danger of people saying it's a bit like weird. I love that he skates like that and I think it's important for the youth to see somebody who skates without an ego but can back it up with all the technical and foundational skill. I think he's had an impact on rollerblading already and I'm pretty sure he's going to be considered one of the all-time greats in the future. Yeah, I already know. If you're on the lookout for style inspiration, Japan has been dripping with it for decades. You've got legends like Takeshi Yasutoko and Chiaki Itu who put them on the map, with Soichiro Kanashima taking up the reins behind them. There's a ruck of young prospects in the form of Jun Shoha, Shiono Hashimoto, Kaho Mieyo, Mi Mayoga, and there's two skaters under 30 I think these prospects will be looking to for inspiration. 
First is Jahiru Uzuma, who won the AIL when she was 14, and is one of the most decorated Winter Clash competitors, having won it three times. The first time was when she was just 16, then again in 2013, and in 2020. Despite the spread of years, she's still coming out on top. She is an absolute style queen, and arguably one of the most flawless female street skaters of all time. She's not only an amazing flag bearer for Japan's heritage of crisp, clean and concise skating, but also female skaters generally. In every bit of footage you can find of her, it's clear she holds herself to the highest level of execution. Let's have it straight, like, she makes skating look mint. She was part of Valo and now rides for them, and the only missing piece really is a pro skate. I'm sure she's already considered one of the top 10 female skaters of all time, and she'll be a massive inspiration to any young girls getting into rollerblading. Second is the boy wonder, Naburu Katayama, whose skating is absolutely clinical. He has dream level execution on tricks. Not only can he pull off extremely technical maneuvers and introduces loads of style to them, making them way more digestible to non-skaters, but he's also very creative with it as well. He has a fully stocked arsenal of tricks to pick from, and no matter what he chooses to do, from the more straightforward things like gaps and airs, to the more involved things like a hurricane topsail, it looks immaculate. He also has a keen eye and knowledge of what works well. He seems to always do tricks that I think are cool, or can pick the right trick for the spot. Now he's only just into his 20s and it's frightening to think what he'll be able to produce in the next 5 to 10 years. Now leaning into the part skaters, the other month or so ago I did a poll asking people who I thought would dominate skate competitions in the next 5 to 10 years. Japan came out on top, closely followed by South Korea and it's Jae Yoon leading their charge. He skates park like he's launching himself off enormous ski jumps. It's spectacular to watch and a real crowd pleaser. Like, not only can he do the most turbo flips and spins, but he does them with outstanding control when it could easily look like a string of sausages being launched to the moon. He's only 19 and I can see him dominating skate comps in the next few years. I'd just really like to see him more, basically. Things like fees allow him to show his next level aerial skill and I think that could be a big draw for outsiders, but he can also put together a street part as seen in his USD team introduction where he carries that same precision skating. He's not going to have a completely clear run at it though, he'll be up against Brazilian Danilo Senna who absolutely loves a spin something chronic. He is all about giving it some welly and is absolutely bang into the crowd pleases. I'm pretty sure the second he learns a new grind, the next step is 540ing into it. I wouldn't be too surprised if he first learnt the tricks by 5ing into them. This year alone he's won Paul Easter in Brazil, he came third in the Winter Clash men's after a solid performance, and second at fees, only losing out to Julian Kudo, who is arguably the best comp skater right now. And he had this to say of Danilo. And to be honest, if he was first, I would have been like, fair enough. It's worth noting that Julian has been in the sotty conversation for the last few years, and a, a big part of the reason why he's in that conversation is because of his park skating skills. It's not too hard to conceive that Danilo could follow a similar path and be competing for Skater of the Year based off his comp skating abilities. I mean, he's only going to improve, being more measured, getting stronger, adding more control into those moves that currently might look a little bit wild. When I was putting this list together, or I got to nine, there was a few other people there I was on the fence about, and then I realized there's no American skaters in the list. Now when I asked my followers to name some, there are none. Quite a few people said not, which is in stark contrast to the top 10 list of all time, which is usually dominated by American skaters. Now this person is definitely deserving of being on this top 10 list. The only reason I didn't initially have them is because I thought they were over 30. But it's interesting to see how the power scales have kind of shifted over time. And if you want me to do another video on that, let me know. Anyway, nothing says America more than a state known for its cowboy culture. It's down to Texas and Andrew Broom, who is fucking phenomenal. Back when he was just 17 and looking like a young Shawn Mendes, Micah Yeager described broom skating as absolute manipulation. It's rare to see that kind of ownership in someone so young, which is a statement that stands true today. Put more plainly, he seems to be able to do whatever he wants to do with his skates and do it effortlessly. He was 
was first put on by Adapt and Peter was readying to make him a pro and give him a pro skate but he left and was taken on by Valo. When Valo ended USD took him under their wing but he eventually found a place on Razors where just last year he got his first pro skate. Having four brands happy to take you on and then going pro and getting a pro skate from one of the brands known for being most stingiest about giving pro skates definitely holds some weight. One of the first things you'll notice about his skating is that he just pisses tricks and stuff that carries clear risk will be done in a way that feels very nonchalant. Watch a few more of his many extraordinary sections like local, candy or ends and you'll notice his vast trick vocabulary and panache for doing tricks both ways, full ambidexterity like a few of his other peers in this list and what I think makes a truly great modern skater is that mixture of many different forms. He is a vegetable medley, it's all in there. There is NASA level tech skating, there is plenty of rowdy stuff, he's creative, he can take on a variety of spots no matter how awkward and despite the plethora of content he's released, every time he releases something new, there's something in there that surprises me and makes me think, fucking hell. He is actually really, really good. And I'd confidently say, now that I know he's under 30, he's America's best skater under 30. People get a bit of a cob on about young skaters not getting recognition. But there are brands out there putting these skaters on, giving them a platform, taking them on tour, giving them pro skates and motivating them to continue. This gives the generation below them something to aspire to. A lot of these names have come from a time when skating wasn't so hot and was falling apart a little bit and we should take comfort from that. Even when times were a bit lacklustre and rough as badge as arseholes, like, Rollerblading still produced amazing skaters. And they're not just getting participation pro skates and recognition, they are unreal. They put out incredible street sections and they can smash up park comps. There's loads of variety, style and creativity. They do dangerous stuff. They take inspiration from the past, but they're also keeping it fresh and evolving skating. They are leading the way, whether you like it or not. Whew, there you go. If there's any names you think I missed out or changed around, let me know in the comments. Massive thank you to my Patreons and channel members. This channel runs on your support, so without that, I wouldn't be here. So thank, thank you. Here's a couple of other videos you can watch in the meantime until I'm back again, which will be soon-ish, I hope. Uh, spotty dog.